and there is not a single task that the president assigned me which I did not execute in full. The Jubilee Coalition we formed a decade ago was formed through a covenant to eliminate the politics of hate, division, and ethnicity. Political competition organized around ethnic division is toxic, yet many politicians accept this to be the essence of democracy. Our covenant formed the foundation of a new approach, issue-based politics institutionalized through national political parties. We succeeded in demonstrating that democracy does not go hand in hand with chaos, confusion, or instability. We have shown that democracy does not express itself through discrimination, exclusion, division, suspicion, or conflict. In government, we focused on delivering those projects and programs that would enable the state meet the people at their point of need. Therefore, we swiftly transformed the country through unprecedented investments in infrastructure as the springboard to effective, efficient, and sustainable service delivery to all parts of Kenya. As a result, we build a new, modern, 700-kilometer-long standard gauge railway, constructed 10,000 kilometers of new tarmac, and connected 6 million people to electricity. We also set up 150 technical training colleges. The next phase of our transformation was going to be the Big Four Agenda, which would leverage these foundational undertakings to ensure that the economic and social rights of Kenyans would be actualized by creating jobs for millions of young people out of school, out of college, and out of our universities. It would also transform agriculture to increase food production and to lower the cost of living and increase money in the pockets of millions of farmers. Big Four would also radically change our delivery of health care by rolling out a comprehensive universal health program. This would complete the task of transforming Kenya that we had been assigned in 2013. From 2017, however, the party pack peddled on its foundational commitments, including the founding covenant. The party rejected national inclusive issue-based issue transformative leadership and embraced parochial, ethnic, divisive, and retrogressive politics. It defaulted to tribe as the organizing variable of our political and of our politics and governance. It privatized governance and weaponized public policy and institutions. It pursued personal politics of congregating an entitled few to express their individual wishes as community interests and translate their private consensus as national policy. In our first term, we made exceptional progress in setting the stage for national transformation. In our second term, we witnessed accelerated regression into the tyranny, personality cult politics, and the weaponization of public offices to intimidate, harass, and persecute Kenyans perceived not to worship 
those in power. Many large enterprises were destroyed. Many business owners harassed. Many leaders subjected to humiliation, intimidation, blackmail, because their, their only crime was holding contrary opinions to those holding the levers of state power. A new frame of national unity was engineered in undemocratic and in terms which rationalized grounding and swallowing the whole opposition and the vandalization of the constitution to accommodate corrupt and dangerous ethnic arrangements. At the same time, the Big Four agenda was abandoned, pushed into the back burner as execution of its flagship projects was left at the mercy of forces of emergent state capture. Those who remained loyal to our founding vision were shunned, hounded, threatened, and then persecuted. This is how we lost four years that would have gifted us with a brilliant blossoming of a beautiful dream which inspired millions of Kenyans in 2013. <laughs> to his credit, my friend the President did inform me that he needed space to work on his personal legacy as the fourth president. I obliged, and this led to my eventual retreat to the margins of a government that I had participated in forming. The past four years have provided me special moments to be able to engage consistently with ordinary people. As Deputy President, I have worked directly with Wananchi, going to meet them in their villages, their markets, their farms, and their places of work, and to have practiced the leadership of listening more and speaking less. All through my political journey, I have believed in working with the people, listening to them, and doing my best to do what they want, not what I think will be a monument to my own achievements. I have learned that our plush, comfortable, secure offices are inaccessible to the majority of the people who need them the most. As a leader, this is a huge setback because it costs us the opportunity to be useful and effective. These engagements taught me a lot about things I thought I knew. Most importantly, they reminded me the most important question of all. What does the government do and for whom does it work? And how, therefore, should it work? I was appalled by the intensity of contempt many have for ordinary people and their rejection of any suggestion that their voice matters. I remain sorrowful over the hatred in the language that proudly despises the poor, the struggling, the hurting, the lonely, and the abandoned. Many of us have felt the stinging lash of this contempt, and we all know where it comes from. Behind the shameless deception that national unity is the coalescing of a few leaders to organize their selfish interests in an implacable sense of exclusive entitlement to the privileges associated with state power. This entitlement is the basis for the formulation of a cynical agenda to capture the state and disenfranchise ordinary people for good. That is why we have witnessed 
the criminalization of enterprise, the marginalization of li livelihoods, and many parts form part and parcel of this contemptuous exclusion. We in the Hustler Nation believe that the measure of any society lies in how it treats its weakest and vulnerable members. We work from the bottom up because it takes, because if we take care of the bottom, we take care of everybody. We want Kenyans to have opportunity to hustle from the bottom up. The top, therefore, must be understood to be everyone's aspiration, objective, and ideal destination. It is not bottom versus up. It is bottom up. It is not bottom versus up. It is bottom up. I commit, therefore, to live up to your, the original covenant 